Hello everyone, this is part 1 of GATE 2021 Polymer Science Solution. In this video, I will talk about theoretical questions and in part 2, we will discuss numerical problems. This year paper was relatively tough since several new type of theoretical and numerical questions were introduced. But I will show you that most of the questions are just modification of simple concepts. We think that difficulty level of GATE questions in coming years will be similar. So during our course on polymer science, we put special emphasis in making sure students fully understand the concept and also how to apply these concepts to solve difficult questions. In the following slides, we will see why it is important to have a clear understanding of the topic. So let's start one by one. So let's start with the first question. In this question, identify the monomer other than ethylene to synthesize LLDPE. As we know, LLDPE is a linear polymer with short branches. To introduce branches in polyethylene, ethylene is polymerized in presence of a small amount of alpha olefin. When two different monomers are used to synthesize polymer, the polymer is known as a copolymer. LLDP is a copolymer of ethylene and alpha olefins. Alpha olefins are alkene having a double bond at the primary position or we can say at the alpha position. Some of the common examples are 1-butene, one 1-hexene, one 1-octene, one 1-decene, one isobutylene, etc. Question 2 is from polymer blend. In the question, it is given that polypropylene and polyamide 6 together form an immiscible blend and we need to identify the thermodynamic reason for their immiscibility. As you know, a polymer blend is a mixture of two or more polymers. Depending on their physical and chemical nature, they can be miscible or immiscible blend. Other than these factors, miscibility or immiscibility of polymers also depends on Gibbs free energy. If Gibbs free energy delta G is a negative, polymer form miscible blend. If delta G is positive, polymers form immiscible blend. As in the question, it is given that polypropylene and polyamide forms immiscible blend. That means here delta G is positive. Now let's see from the given options which condition will lead to positive delta G. So first option is low enthalpy of mixing. Enthalpy of mixing will be high or low that depends on interaction between the polymers. Since polypropylene and polyamide have different polarities and crystalline morphologies, they do not mix together. Since there is no interaction between the two or we can say that no bond formation or dissociation, therefore enthalpy does not change. So both A and C cannot be the answers. Either B or D is the answer. Now let's put entropy value in the Gibbs free energy equation and see which option gives positive delta G. So when entropy is high, delta G become negative because T multiplied by delta S become bigger than delta H. Now we know that when delta G is a negative, polymer mix together and form compatible blend. Since we know polypropylene and polyamide blend is immiscible, therefore option A is not correct. So the correct answer is option D, low entropy. In this case, delta G will be positive. Next question is among the given option, which one is an elastomer? So an elastomer is a polymer with weak intermolecular forces, low Young modulus, high elasticity and high strain at break compared to thermoplastic material. To improve modulus and rigidity, elastomers are cross-linked. The cross-linking process of elastomer is called vulcanization. So among the given option, vulcanized rubber is the correct answer. Rubbers are elastic, weak material and they are vulcanized to improve mechanical properties. Rubbers are also known as elastomers. In question 4, we need to identify what type of pattern will be obtained if a compression molded isotropic polypropylene film is analyzed under X-ray diffractometer. 
XRD is used to study crystallinity of a material. When X-rays are passed through a sample, X-rays are scattered by the crystalline part of the sample. Since in crystals, atoms are regularly arranged at equal distance, emitted X-rays are detected at the same spot due to high density of atoms in one place. We know that polypropylene is a semi-crystalline polymer. When semi-crystalline polymer is analyzed under XRD, it gives bright spots due to presence of crystals. But in the question, it is given that compression molded polypropylene film is isotropic in nature. Since films are very thin and also it is mentioned that it is isotropic, which means chains are randomly oriented and thus the film is fully amorphous. Since diffraction pattern of an amorphous polymer consists of weak and diffused ring, therefore the diffraction pattern of isotropic polypropylene film will consist of only circular ring pattern. So answer B is correct. In question 5 you need to identify biodegradable polymer among the given options. Biodegradation means degradation of material by enzymes produced by microorganism. Biodegradable plastics are made from all natural plant materials such as corn oil, orange peel, starch and plants. These polymers have carbon backbone that can easily undergo hydrolysis. The degradation of these polymers results in the formation of natural byproducts such as oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, water, biomass and inorganic salts. Biodegradable polymers are of two types. Natural polymers like protein, cellulose and synthetic polymers such as polylactic acid, polycoprolactone, polyethylene oxide, polyvinyl alcohol, etc. These polymers are mainly used for biomedical, food and cosmetic applications. Question 6. In question 6, identify the reason why small molecule crystals show single melting point but polymer crystals show a range of melting point. I think this is a very basic question and can help us to clearly understand difference between behavior of small molecule materials and macromolecules like polymer. So during crystallization of small molecule, whole molecule orient in a specific manner forming exactly same bonds between neighboring molecules. However, when a macromolecule like polymer chain forms crystals, whole molecule that is whole chain cannot be part of the crystal. During crystallization of polymer, only part of the chain forms crystal through chain folding. Another thing, during polymerization, all crystals do not start forming at the same time. So there is huge difference in crystal sizes. Since chains move in a random manner, and crystal planes in polymers are not exactly at the same distance and bonded to each other with exactly same force. So the crystals in polymer are in metastable state. Because of huge difference in size and packing strength of the crystals, polymers show a range of melting temperature compared to small molecule crystal. Therefore, the correct answer is C. In this question, you need to find out what will happen to the glass transition temperature of a polymer if cooling rate is increased during solidification process. I think this question is little vague since type of polymer is not given. The effect of cooling rate on glass transition temperature of amorphous and semi-crystalline polymer will be different since in one case it influences the free volume whereas in another case it will influence the percent crystallinity. As it is not given which type of polymer is this, we will consider this as an amorphous polymer. In case of amorphous polymers, the effect of cooling rate on glass transition temperature is well presented in a book by L. H. Sperling, Introduction to Physical Polymer Science. The plot below shows the relationship. In the plot, we can see that the experiment used to detect Tz is dilatometry, where we are measuring the rate of change of volume with increasing temperature. Although the molecular phenomena occurring near the glass transition temperature is not well understood, we can generalize the phenomena by saying that at lower cooling rate, the chains will have more time to come close and form a dense structure. 
whereas at faster cooling rate the chains will freeze before forming a dense structure so when we start to heat the polymer due to high density and lower free volume chains will starts to push each other at lower temperature to create a space for chain movement and this will lead to increase in volume for sample cooled at higher rate as it is less dense and have some volume for chains to move around chains will start to move at relatively higher temperature as glass transition temperature is the point where rate of change of volume significantly increases so polymer with lower free volume means polymer cooled at low cooling rate so tz at lower temperature and polymer with higher volume means polymer with faster cooling rate will so tz at higher temperature so the answer b is correct question it says that a thin elastomeric rod is held at temperature above tz and below tm and two equal and opposite force were applied so what will happen to the rod if the temperature is further increased and it is still below the melting point it will expand shrink remain constant or expand in loading direction to answer this question first we need to understand morphology of stressed and unstressed elastomer or we can say that rubber rubber is an amorphous polymer with randomly coiled chains due to random orientation of chains rubber possesses high entropy when force is applied on rubber the chains starts to uncoil and straighten up due to straightening polymer chains come close to each other and form crystals since crystallization happen on application of stress this type of crystallization is known as stress induced crystallization so when stressed rubber is heated again the chains starts to melt and polymer regains coiled structure again so when force is applied on elastomeric rod and heated above tz the rod starts to crystallize and due to crystallization rod will starts to sink on further heating so option b is correct rod will shrink along the loading direction question 9 In this question we need to identify the sequence of the size of a coiled polymer chain when they are in ideal solvent good solvent or poor solvent As we know when a polymer chain is added into a solvent it does not remain in a elongated form rather it forms a coiled structure Now the diameter or size of the coil depends on the interaction between polymer chain and solvent molecule In case of ideal solvent there is not positive or negative interaction so we can consider it as a baseline size in case of good solvent polymer chain will have positive interaction with the solvent molecules so the solvent molecules can penetrate inside the polymer coil and push it to expand a bit depending upon the extent of interaction polymer chains can even form an extended structure however in any case the size of polymer coil will be larger than the ideal solvent the case will be completely opposite in case of poor solvent since in poor solvent polymer chains would not like to be in contact with the solvent molecules it will try to minimize the surface area by collapsing further into a highly dense polymer coil as a result the size of the coil will decrease so the size of the polymer coil will be smaller than the ideal solvent so based on these points we can say that option a is right order of size of the polymer coil in different solvents question 10 is to match plastic additives with their function as we know polymers are mixed with different additives to achieve desired processability and performance a curing or coupling agent is a substance that is used to improve rigidity and harden the material antioxidants are chemical that are added to the polymer to protect them against the bad effect of oxidation or degradation during processing plasticizers are added to the polymer to promote plasticity and flexibility a blowing agent is used to produce cellular structure by a foaming process 
blowing agents are mainly used to produce polymeric foams example of additives used to achieve these functions is listed in the table so the correct answer is b question 11 this is a very interesting question here you need to match polymer process to their respective shear rate it is very difficult to assign any specific shear rate to a process since a lot of parameters can be changed to change the shear rate during processing but processes can be arranged in terms of their relative shear rate range so let's discuss them one by one compression molding is the process in which polymers are melted and compressed between two plates so there is hardly any shear applied so the range 1 to 10 can be assigned to the compression molding Extrusion is the process in which polymer are significantly sheared to achieve desired mixing. The shear rate is controlled by screw speed. So it has an option to offer very high shear rate. The typical shear rate range is 10 to 100. Next is calendering. Calendering is the process to make thin sheets. During this process thick polymer films are stretched to form thin films. But before calendering process polymer needs to get mixed with other additives in a molten form by a extrusion process so there are two options we can consider calendering process separate from extrusion or we can consider calendering process as combination of extrusion and calendering using rollers based on the option given it appears that the question setter considered the second option so the shear rate range for calendering process will be in the range of 100 to 1000 during injection molding polymer melt is pushed through an small opening into a mold depending upon the injection speed and product dimension very high shear is applied on the material in general potential to apply significantly high shear rate is more in injection molding than extrusion Therefore shear rate range for injection molding is 1000 to 10000 So based on this information the correct answer is A Question 12 In this question shear stress and shear viscosity plot as a function of shear rate is given for a material that shows solid like behavior with yielding and liquid like behavior and it is asked to identify stress and viscosity curve when shear rate is increasing for these two type of materials in the given plot we can see that curve for q is linearly increasing with increasing shear rate and for s the viscosity remain constant throughout the shear rate these behaviors are classic example of newtonian fluid so sample q and s are definitely liquid like material Now if we see the plot of sample P we can see that although stress is not increasing with shear rate but for even a small amount of shearing stress value is very high similarly plot of R shows that viscosity of the sample is infinite at low shear rate both these phenomena is properties of solid like material which shows yielding at which shows yielding like a bingham fluid so considering all these facts the answer is very clear that is option b